company, you should have gotten two handouts. One is yellow and the other one is white. So um, if you still need a yellow form, hopefully somebody at your table at least has one and you can look on. We'll have the extras up here if you need them at the end and also the white form as well. Does any table not have at least a couple to look at? So we have it. So which one do y'all need? Okay, they need the white and this one. Where is Miss, um, Miss Hofer's coming right here? <laughs> And Ms. Hofer, this table right up here. Okay. Has a, needs a couple. Okay. There you go. One more. All right, coming right back. All right. Um, first, let me say thank you so much for um, sticking around. This is a great crowd to hear about math. That just makes me really excited because I love math, which is why I coach the math team. Um, I'm Amy Hacker, and I'm the sixth grade math team coach here at Homewood Middle School. This is my 17th year here at the middle school and my 17th year coaching the math team. Um, when I was in school, I was also on the math team from seventh grade to twelfth grade. So I've now like surpassed that. I've been on the math team my life more than not so um, I feel like I that's all I've ever done so um, I have a I coach but also we have another coach um, Kevin Hughes he's an eighth grade algebra one teacher here and he's um, also a coach he's just not here this evening all right so a little bit about the math team um, math team is a competitive team that meets um, after school from three to four on Tuesdays um, the math team is designed for those kids who excel in the area of math. And that means, like, I, I met with the elementary kids um, last week with Miss Alexander. I went over and talked to them, and, you know, I gave them the example that, like, if they're the first one to raise their hand in their class, or, you know, when they're getting their math test back in class, I know that they don't get grades, but they do put on the, you know, how, they're, how many they're getting out of, like, 20. If they're getting, you know, 20 out of 20, 19 out of 20, those are the kids that we're really looking for. Um, it's also for students who are outside-the-box thinkers. Okay, these are kids who, you know, they're able to come around and attack a problem in different ways and know all the different ways and different ways to solve problems. So sometimes, like, even for example, in my math class, because I also teach sixth grade math, um, if I have a question and I'll show them how, you know, how do you do this? And I'll show it and I have kids who will raise their hand and say, oh, well, can I do it this way? And they'll have just a different way of doing it. Those, those are the kids who are going to really excel in, in math team. Um, one thing that we ask for the kids um, in sixth grade is that they're going to get grades next year. And so we ask them to maintain an A in their math class. Um, that's usually a pretty easy task for kids on the math team, okay? Because again, they excel in the area of math, and so, um, you know, that's not going to be an issue for them. Normally, our kids on math team that are excelling in math team, you know, they have a 95 to 100 in their class, okay? These are, these are not going to be the kids who are struggling on that A-B line, really. And then, um, yes, the team practices after school on Tuesdays, and our tournaments are held on Saturdays. We have anywhere from four to six in the school year. Um, right now, we're still looking at six for next year. We did have six this year, so. All right. Um, a little bit about the Homewood math curriculum. Um, if you haven't heard in the news, the math curriculum has changed. We have a new course of study that will be implemented transition next year and then the next full. So a little bit about Homewood's math track though, all the way through the high school. Um, we have sixth grade math and then there's the seventh and eighth and it goes all the way through the high school. But typically right now what we have is we have the general class and then we also have the advanced class which is gonna be the math team class. Um, right now seventh grade, the seventh grade class is pre-algebra. And then we have also the pre-algebra math team class. Um, the major differences in the class, um, it's just going to be at a higher level, and then also they're required to do the extra work as far as the math team portion. Um, in Homewood, that pre-algebra class is already at an accelerated pace as far as like when we think about the state's requirements. Um, currently, the state has a seventh grade math course that's not taught in Homewood. We teach sixth grade math. They all go into seventh grade, which is an advanced course in all the other districts if you look around us, and then um, they go into eighth grade algebra one. Now again, we offer the math team course, which all it does is it adds on those with the extra component of the math team part. Um, now again, that will change. We're still looking at how that will transition in the next couple of years about what those course names will actually be in seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, but we'll still maintain having that math team class as well. So math team is something that can follow them all the way up to the high school. 
Um, let's see. All right, um, success at a math team tournament. Um, when we think about um, grades in like the, um, a general classroom, or we think about like when I teach my unit on decimals in my math class, we look at, you know, are they meeting the standard? And we give a test and we say, okay, well, did they at least get 75% or above? And we're saying they've mastered the standard and moved on. Well, a math team tournament test is much different. It is questions that are sometimes so hard that no one gets them. Sometimes the tests are, you know, we have lots of kids who will make 70 and above, and sometimes the highest score on a math, on a math team test might be a 50, and that person gets a trophy at their tournament. It's all based on how they do compared to everyone else. It's not based on a set of standards that they learned the standard and we're trying to show that it shows mastery. It's just a competition to see, you know, how they do compared to somebody else. So that's something they kind of have to get used to um, as far as, um, you know, like, oh, well, I didn't do that well. I only got half the questions. But it's like, no, we, that might actually be really, you know, really great. It just depends on the tournament that we're at. Um, the co competitions have two parts. There's parts. The written test has 25 questions with three tiebreakers. Um, it's a little bit different than um, a general test. Um, when we think about, like parents, when we think about when you're in school, um, we, there's 25 questions worth four points apiece for a possible 100. Um, but the difference is that a math team tournament test is that if they miss the question, it's minus one. So if they get every question wrong, they get a negative 25. So it's better not to guess. And so that's a skill that they learn, um, being on the math team to go to the tournaments, because it's better to leave it blank than to just a blind guess. Um, because, like I said, it can be a difference between getting a trophy or not, even one point. Um, so it's a skill that we continue to teach throughout the school year, um, on that skill on that type of test taking. Um, and the other portion is ciphering. Um, ciphering is done in two different ways at different tournaments. Sometimes everyone does it in the classroom, and we'll practice that on Tuesdays, but also sometimes we have where they throw their hand up in the air and they answer it as fast as they can and only four students cipher at those tournaments. It's about half and half right now. Um, and so that's a whole different thing as far as the ciphering and the written test. So when we go to tournaments, everybody always takes the written test and then four students cipher. And then at some of the tournaments, everyone ciphers, which is a little confusing, but the kids will get it once they get in there. Um, let's see. This is kind of a question, uh, kind of how the ciphering works. You can kind of see there's um, everyone sits in the audience and one student from each team goes up and then they have the answers on the questions on a screen and then they throw their answer up as fast as they can. Um, if they get it in the first time interval, they get five points. The second time interval, it's three and then one point. And so some kids really like to cipher and then some other kids are like, no, I don't want to do that um, because it is a lot of pressure. You know, they go up there and there's, um, you know, everybody's watching them and that kind of thing. But we do <laughs> practice it a lot and so. You know, some, some kids, it's their, they really love it. And so, um, let's see. The ciphering team, um, the ciphering team meets outside the normal practice time. All students will practice on Tuesday afternoons. And then our ciphering meet time team meets outside the regular time. Um, it's in addition to the Tuesday afternoon practice. I, they do come to both. Um, about eight to 10 students are usually on the ciphering team and they qualify for the ciphering team based on our um, camp tournament, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. All right, so this is, I know this is a lot. It would, it would be a lot if it were me because I've already listened to everything else for an hour, but um, so how do you know if math team is a good fit for your child? Um, well, we're gonna have this summer, we're gonna have a math team camp. We've held it for the last several years and I've had some great feedback from it. Um, that it just really gives you and your child if it's a if math team's gonna be a good fit for them. And so what we'll do is um, it's for four days. The first three days we'll be learning some math team skills, things like that. And then on the last day we'll have a little camp tournament. So you'll get to see kind of how a math team tournament works. And so after they've been at camp for a week, they kind of get an idea like, oh, is this something I want to do and sign up for the school year. Um, and like I, some of the kids raised their hand last week and said, oh, well, what if we come the first day and we don't want to come back? And I was like, that's fine. <laughs> you know, that's perfectly fine to come and say, hey, I gave it a try and it's not for me. You know, um, and then if it's, if it's a question at all, I always encourage coming to camp um, because it just really gives them a, a, an idea because we're going to teach at the same pace that we'll teach throughout the school year. And it is quick. That pace is quick that we're teaching. Um, the registration deadline is May 1st, so that does give you a little bit of time. Um, the registration form is the yellow sheet that you'll see that you've got. 
Um, the payment, it will show, show you on there. You can pay cash or check, just returnable to HMS. Um, you can drop it by or mail it. Um, the cost is $25, and it's a couple of weeks after van camp, so it does not conflict July the 20th through the 23rd. Um, just a little bit more about what we're going to do at camp. That's just talking about um, we're going to learn about math team camps. We'll participate in the competition. And then again, it's not required to come to camp, but it's highly recommended. Um, on the Thursday of the camp, we're going to have the little camp tournament. Um, this is where they'll really get an idea if it's something they want to do. You know, I tell kids, I'm like, if you don't enjoy the tournaments, you know, you're probably not going to want to do the practice. It's the same thing, like, if you don't like playing in the football game, then you're probably not going to want to do the practices either. So, you know, it's really important that they really want to do it and enjoy it. So this kind of gives you the schedule of what that will look like. Um, we, I do invite parents to come to the ciphering portion if you want to come for camp, um, just because it gives you an idea of what it'll be like. All the kids at camp will cipher, and then um, the awards will be 11.45 to 12. Um, and like I said, it's a great time to come and see ciphering if you want to just kind of know what it is. Um, so let's say that your child decides math team is a good fit. Okay, so um, what you'll want to do is you'll get this. At the end of camp, I'll have these blue registration forms, and it has, these are the items listed on it that are the expectations for the school year. Um, they're expected to maintain an A in their math class throughout the school year. Um, we will do grade checks, and if a child does not have, a student does not have an A, we'll just, it's kind of, they're on academic probation, and they'll go off of, they're off of math team and not able to participate until they're, they bring that grade back up to an A at the next interim or nine week. Um, they need to attend all practices. They're on Tuesdays from 3.15 to 4. We do have some 4 to 4.30. Um, the additional add-on time, which is when we do some assessments, which I'll talk about in a minute. And if you have to um, miss a practice, we just ask that they um, let me know so I can get you um, the missed work. And then, last but not least on there, the failure to attend practices or inappropriate behavior will result in dismissal from the team. And I really don't have a big issue with this. Like, normally the math team kids are, they're wonderful, we have a great time. But the kids who we have an issue with are the ones that really just don't want to be there. Um, so. You know, math team is something we really want them to enjoy and want to be there, um, and that's what makes it just so much more fun for everyone. They need to be picked up on normal practice days by 4 or 4.30 on assessments days. If they're still here 10 minutes past that time, we're going to send them to After the Bell that you heard Coach Houston talking about, and that is a $15 drop-in fee. I ask that students get picked up in the front of the school um, because it's going to be so much later after the school dismisses. But if you want your child to walk or you want your child to get picked up in the back, that's fine, but there'll be a place on the registration form to check that. And just know that, that there's not anyone in the back with them. Okay, so if your child goes out the back and goes to walk or you're picking them up in the back, there's not gonna be anyone back there. And so especially during this time of year when it's dark outside, um, you know, if we're getting out at four and at 420, I walk, cause I actually park in the back, I'll walk back there and it's been 20 minutes since we've been out and there'll be one child back there. Um, that's happened before and they're just by themselves. And so just know that you know if you're checking for them to be picked up in the back, I highly suggest being on time because like I said, it gets dark back there at this time and you know that makes me real nervous with a child back there by themselves. But it does happen, so just kind of keep that in mind. They want to complete all practice problems given each week. We usually have a practice math team test. And then repetitive failure to um, complete homework assignments. We will ask them not to come back because what, that's what we're actually doing each week is going over the homework. All right, so this was something that if you have a child, have had a child in the math team for in the past, is a change that we made this year, so you might want to listen up. Um, this goes along with the white sheet that you have. Um, this is the things to know sheet test. The things to know is it's 150 questions, um, and we ask the kids to memorize this information. If you've talked to anybody on the math team, they'll tell you that information is so helpful on the tournament tests. Um, we teach on the back of the sheet, you'll see the test dates. We've broken that down for them, so you'll see that there's test one, test two, test three into three parts. Then we take it all together the whole test together, and then they'll take, actually take it a second time altogether. And if they take 
that fourth test that it's the whole sheet if they make a 95 or above they don't have to take the fifth one and um, our team this year tomorrow they're taking their final fifth test and I have about 12 students who made the 95 or above and they don't have to take it again tomorrow so um, I did have one student who made a perfect score this year <laughs> that we took it last month and they made a perfect score on it which is very it's very difficult because it is timed the full test is 45 minutes and like I said it's about 150 questions um, but we ask them to memorize that we ask them to make an 80% on each test if they don't make the 80% they're able to go to our computer lab and retake that anytime in that week and then they just need to have an 80% in order to come back the next week um, and it's real easy it's with mr. Hughes our other math team coach he runs our computer lab and so they just show up and retake the test um, and we had a really a lot of success with this so um, it's been a huge increase in the number of kids that have been able to know the entire sheet and so I'm seeing a lot of success with that so and then the tests are taken in school on Schoology which is um, so they'll have their their grade that day the minute they hit submit they'll see how they did um, tournaments sometimes we can only take about 15 students to a tournament um, sometimes they're open to everyone those um, preferences given to those students who've been coming to practice um, and then if it's still we still have more than 15 we'll give a test and the top scorers will have the ability to go um, and then the ciphering is the students who are on the ciphering team um, this was the, is a big one um, I try to really make it very very clear um, I usually have quite a few students on the sixth grade team because we highly recommend this trying it in sixth grade before it becomes a class in seventh grade and so um, we pay for those students to go on the tournament it's not an extra charge per tournament for students and I allow students in sixth grade to go as many as they want to so you can imagine going to six tournaments it's a between eight and ten dollars for each one so it can become very pricey so what we ask is I have to um, I'll send out a Google form and you fill out and tell me which ones you want to, your child wants to attend and then I'm going to send an email out right before I have to register which is usually four to six weeks ahead of time and then you can make any changes you want to and once I have that list that's who I'm registering and so students are expected to, to attend if they have to back out for whatever reason whether it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go to Disney World whatever it might be that's that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity um, I just ask parents to pay that back and again that's only you know eight to ten dollars but again that can start to add up and especially when we have sixth seventh and eighth grade and so we just ask you to help us to be really good stewards of our money for math team um, and then of course the most important thing they want to do is to come to math team to have fun because that's what it's supposed to be about um, that's why I'm there <laughs> Um, in May we do have our May awards assembly that Miss Alexandra men mentioned um, and I will recognize students who've been on the math team there are some requirements for the math team um, they must participate in at least two tournaments that's the required amount and then they have to score at least an 80% on the TTK tests so those are the two main requirements um, and so they, you have to kind of plan ahead like if your child is on you know the baseball team then you can't rely on having the spring to go on the tournaments and things like that that's just something to plan ahead with um, in sixth grade I only require two once they get to seventh grade math team the tournaments are required with one excused absence so it's a little bit different in sixth grade we really give you the chance to try it but then you know in seventh grade it becomes that class it counts as a grade the tournaments are required so that's why we really push it in sixth grade Here's kind of a list and overview of our tournaments. Um, the dates sometimes change, and so I don't want to give you exact dates yet. Um, but right now, these are the six that we've competed in this year, and they, I expect them to be in the same month. So you can see we run about one a month. Um, the ones that are starred, Hoover, Pizzitz, Vestavia High School, those are all in-town tournaments, which would mean your child, you would drop your child off at those schools, and we would just be there from about eight to noon the other tournaments the Hayden the Muscle Shoals and the Austin Middle School that and that's in Decatur Austin is um, those are out of trip town trips and we'll be on a bus and are usually gone all day the Muscle Shoals is a really long day we leave at 5 30 and so it's a long but they it's a really well run tournament and so we enjoy going and the kids usually the kids love it as well so we have a good time Let's see. the registration forms if you decide you want your child to do math team 
at the end of math team camp. These will be available at the end of camp. Um, this will be due by the first day of math team practice, which will be on August the 25th. It is like the second Tuesday. Um, once I receive your registration form for the school year, I'll add you to our Schoology, class, Schoology page, and your child will then have access to all the information that they'll need. Um, as far as dates, that's where I put, post homework, that's where we get to take the tests, all kinds of things. Um, there is a math team fee that's $25, but keep in mind that does include the math team t-shirt. Um, you want to pay for that at registration. So when you come through, um, when you do online registration, you'll see where it says math team. That's it. And again, that includes the t-shirt. Um, we'll, at the first practice or the second practice, I'll send out information about getting your size. Um, and last but not least, math team success. We want math team to be a positive experience. Um, and so, especially since this is their first experience at HMS, getting grades, all of that. So a um, couple of things you want to consider about whether math team is a good fit. And if you're on the fence at all, that's where I really want to push the camp. Because that's where you're, because like I said, your child can come, and if they decide on the first day they don't want to come back, it's fine. It's not a big deal. A um, couple of things to consider, your child's star scores. You can get them from your teacher's fifth grade teacher. They can give it to you. We're looking for those kids who are in that 99th percentile. That's who we're really looking for to be on the math team or to know that they're going to be successful. State testing scores, you can look, hopefully, maybe you still have some of those scores that you can look at um, from previous years, from the Aspire. Um, again, we're looking for that high 99th percentile. Um, and then the prognosis test, um, all fifth graders um, in March will take a prognosis test. They've not taken it yet. Um, their fifth grade teacher will administer it. And we're um, looking for kids who can make a 70 or above on that prognosis test. That's the recommended score that we you know, can say, like, we feel like your child will be successful on math team. Um, tonight, before you leave, on the back round tables, there's a place for you to sign in that you were here tonight. Um, and you're going to include an email. And so your child's prognosis score, if you're here tonight, will be emailed to you after they take the test in March. Okay, so you can expect that in March, you should get that email. If, um, so if for some reason you're like, I'm not getting that, you're welcome to email me, but it'll be late March, probably right after spring break, and we'll get those emailed out, okay? Um, so those are some things to consider, and like I said, if you're like, well, we really want to do it, my child wants to do it, but I'm not sure, that's where I'll say, that's the camp. That's how you know, because um, your child can come and see if it's a good fit, and especially when you see our teaching style and those kind of things and the pace that we're going to be teaching at to see if it's a good fit. Um, I, one more plug I didn't say. Our math team camp is sponsored by the HMS PTO, and so um, we're really appreciative to them because they sponsor our um, camp each year. So um, if you have questions, you're always welcome to email me. My um, email is on the yellow form. Um, and if I always usually have some people who want to turn in their form tonight. You're welcome to do that for camp if you would like. Um, if you are wanting to, if you're not going to, if you know like we're going to be out of town and you're not going to come to um, math team camp to get this blue form, I'm going to have your emails tonight and I'll send an email out in early August and say, just a reminder, if you wanted to sign up for math team, here's how you get the blue form. Okay? So if you have, like I said, you have questions, feel free to email. Thank you so much for coming. Do not forget to please sign in on one of the computers. Back in the back is a reference to know that you are here. That is a requirement.